In this wee video, I'm going to be looking at what happens to the MOSFET when we use it as a transducer driver, just to illustrate some of the concepts we looked at before. So I've got quite a busy uh, little experiment set up here. I've got my potential divider, potentiometer, sorry, which I had last time, which is this one here, supplying a voltage to the gate of the MOSFET, measured VGS with this orange voltmeter. You can't see all the power supply wirings because that would make it too busy. I've got my MOSFET here, which is the IRF510, which I've been using in the last couple of videos that precede this one. And this time it's connected to a, a light bulb, and the light bulb's connected to the ammeter through this orange wire here. So my ammeter, as I had before, is my data logger. So there's the current. It's measuring this very small and slightly annoying value there. Uh, this is my voltage. Now, what voltage is that? Well, my voltage is this voltage here. It's VDS. So this data logger is basically measuring all the MOSFET parameters. And the third one that I have being measured here is, is actually power. And this is the power being dissipated by the MOSFET, not by the light bulb. Okay, it's the MOSFET voltage, this one here, and therefore this is the power dissipated by the MOSFET. And we're going to try and work out what's going to happen. Now, first of all, I'm going to um, pretend that this is a circuit which is being used to turn the light bulb on and off from a logic circuit. So I'm going to set my gate voltage to be the output from a logic circuit, I'm going to set it to be 5 volts. And I've drawn that on my diagram, on my graph. Okay, so up we go. As you know, it's the light bulb's not turning on at all. And some of you may have noticed that and thought, that's strange, why is the light bulb not turning on? Well, the reason the light bulb's not turning on is because I've not turned the power supply on yet. When I do turn the power supply on, I sincerely hope it will turn on. So there's my gate voltage set at 5, five volts. Um, I'm keeping the power supply voltage to the bulb at 6 volts, exactly. The fact that these two are both 6 is entirely coincidental. And when I turn the power supply on, the bulb should light up, and we should be able to work out a few things. So let's have a look. So we know from the MOSFET equation from last time that IDS equals GM VGS minus VTH threshold voltage, gate source voltage, transcon transconductance. So therefore, we should be able to work this value out. Now, for our MOSFET, we found last time from experiment that it's 0.554 was the transconductance, and I haven't changed my MOSFET. My gate source voltage is being set at 5 volts. My threshold voltage was measured to be 3.9. So therefore, my drain source current should be if I can find my calculator, there it is. My drain source current should be 5 minus 3.9, which we clearly don't need to do on a calculator, times by 0.544 equals uh, 0.6. Okay, so we'll call it 0.6 amps. So what we're expecting when we turn the power supply is for a current of 0.6 amps to be recorded here to flow through the MOSFET and the bulb and light it all up. Let's have a look, see what happens. Turn the power supply on, and there we go, the bulb's lit up. Now what you'll notice here is the current's actually not 0.6 amps, it's 0.06 amps. And the question is, why is this? Well, this bulb here, the one we're looking at here, has these ratings. It's rated at 6 volts, 0.06 amps. It has the, a certain resistance when it's at its operating temperature, which means that only 0.06 amps of current flows rather than the 0.6 amps we were actually expecting. There's an awful lot of sixes in this question, aren't there? In fact, everything's six, which is weird. Right, so this bulb is now the limiting factor for the MOSFET. The, the MOSFET isn't conducting at 0.6 amps as expected, the actual current flowing is 0.06 amps because that's what the bulb's resistance is limiting it to. However, in this equation here, right, that doesn't figure because we worked out this value. So what's gone wrong? Well, if we have a look at the voltage across the MOSFET, which is this one here, you'll see it's only 0.08 volts. Now, remember that this equation here, this equation here, only works in the current sink region of the MOSFET when it's working at a high enough voltage up here somewhere on my graph 
such that we're in this flat section of graph here. We're clearly not in that section. Okay, 0.08 volts. We're down here somewhere. Okay, and therefore the current is indeed 0.06 amps like that. Whereas that volt, that one there, is of course 0.6 amps. And rather than the voltage being the 6 volts of the power supply that we might have expected it to be, we're actually working at 0.08 volts. That one just there. Okay, so what's happened here is that when you use the MOSFET as a transducer driver, it drops out of the current sink region and comes right down the curve. The characteristics move right down the curve, right down to here. Is this desirable? Well, yes it is. The reason it's desirable is because this device here, if my red pen's going to work, which it hasn't done very often, is actually, oh it is working, is going to get hot, if we allow it to. It's going to get hot because it's dissipating power dissipating power because there's current flowing through it and there's a voltage across it and we know that P equals IV. So if we can actually work down in this area of the curve here where the voltages are very very small then our MOSFET doesn't dissipate power, it doesn't get hot and that's what's happening here. If you look at the power on the data logger, it's 0.005 watts, 5 milliwatts, the MOSFET's not getting hot at all. Yep, cold as anything. Now. It's tempting to say, well, what we can do is we can move along this curve. We can actually um, reduce this voltage here so that we come down and put the MOSFET on some other curve. And the result of that is that we can actually dim the light. Let's have a look. Oop, turn it off. So there we go, look. We can control the brightness of the light, which is fantastic. We've got a thing we control its brightness. That's really useful. But it's not. It's not a good thing. And I'll tell you why it's not a good thing, because if I set this back to 5 volts, look at the power being dissipated, 5 milliwatts. Now watch what happens to the power that's being dissipated if I try and control the light bulb by varying the gate voltage. Okay, first of all, not a lot happens. In fact, nothing happens at all. And then suddenly, the voltage across the MOSFET starts to go up, because I'm changing the curve that the MOSFET's sitting on. It's now dissipating 15 milliwatts of heat of power, 20, 30, and if I get it to the bulb where the bulb's just dimming nicely, look at that, look at 130, can I get any higher? No, that's its peak, I think. 130 milliwatts. The power, rather than being dissipated by the bulb, is now being dissipated by the MOSFET. And this is a very, very poor way of controlling the brightness of the bulb. And now if I fill the MOSFET, it's actually getting slightly warm. Not very hot, because it's not a lot of power that's dissipating, but slightly warm. And then if I keep going down, the current reduces to zero, and the power goes back down to a suitably small level. But the point is, if I try and control the brightness of my bulb using a MOSFET by controlling the gate voltage, all I end up doing is heating the MOSFET up. And that's never going to be a good thing. So don't do it like this. Go and look up how to do pulse width modulation, and do it that way instead. Right, so key learning points from here. When used as a transducer driver, the MOSFET doesn't operate in this, this region here. This equation does not apply. The MOSFET works in this region down here with a very small voltage across it, which means that it doesn't dissipate much power, it doesn't get hot.